Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov too as usual and uh, yeah, Merry Christmas to you guys. It's the 25th of December today or maybe the 26th of December depending on when I upload this video. I hope all of you guys who celebrate Christmas are having a wonderful couple of days and maybe to uh, even sweeten them a bit further, I've got a review of a pretty fascinating vehicle lined up for you guys today. This is the Type 61, the Tier 9 Japanese medium tank leading up to the STB-1 which I was finally able to unlock yesterday on the 24th of December so this was a kind of a uh, advanced Christmas present for me I guess you know in Germany where I live we unwrap our Christmas presents on Christmas Eve of the 24th of December already so I was very very glad to finally get my hands on this vehicle I absolutely adore the STB-1 but of course I could not enjoy it completely before giving you a tour of its predecessor the Type 61 and that's what I'm going to do in this video. So what we're going to do is first of all I'm going to tell you how to research this vehicle, how to unlock the modules, we'll have a look at the stats, compare how good this tank performs to its peers at tier 9, then I'll advise you on the choice of crew skills and equipment you might want to make in this vehicle. Afterwards we'll skip into some gameplay to showcase this tank in action and after that I'll give you a kind of a conclusion and my own opinion on this tank. And in the course of this video I'll try to explain how to use this tank the most effectively and also show you how to counter it on the battlefield so that you know everything you need to know about this Type 61 and can handle it properly. So let's start off with researching the modules. The module tech tree of the Type 61 is not very large but unfortunately you still have to research the tracks first of all because otherwise your suspension will not be able to carry the load of the upgraded gun. So these tracks, the Type 61 suspension, that's the first thing you want to research. After that you want to make a beeline for the 105mm gun First of all you have to research the turret because you need this turret to mount the gun and after that you go for the 105mm because this will give you a huge boost in firepower. Then you take the engine and the radio I believe carries over from the STA-1 so you will not have to research this especially. And um, that's it, then you've researched everything you need for this tank. Now the Type 61 is kind of a pretty interesting medium tank I guess because it seems to not be especially amazing in any one regard but it doesn't really fall down in any other uh, stat or um, means of comparison either so I guess this tank is very well balanced and all in all the experience while driving it was very pleasant. So next I will showcase the stats of this tank and compare it to some other tier 9 medium tanks so that we can get a better idea of uh, how this vehicle actually performs. So we'll be comparing the Type 61 to three other tier 9 medium tanks which all perform pretty similarly to the Type 61, these being the American M46 Patton, the British Centurion Mark 7 and the French uh, AMX 30 prototype. So when we look at the DPM, uh, which is actually one of the major strong suits of a Type 61 compared to most other tier 9 tanks, this stands out as being very very strong. Obviously the M46 pattern has got it beaten by quite a large margin, but then the M46 pattern really shines with its DPM and falls off in lots of other regards. So that's kind of to be expected and it's almost on par with the AMX 30 and leaves the Centurion Mark 7 trailing behind quite far so the DPM is definitely you could say outstanding on this Type 61. The penetration is also very very good meaning that you can actually put that DPM to good use. 258mm is great still at tier 10 and obviously amazing at tier 9. The M46 pattern pales in comparison and really only the Centurion can beat the Type 61 by a pretty large number of 10mm of extra penetration and that means that the Type 61's gun is actually very very competitive. This 105mm has got a rate of fire of 6.26 which is very very good compared to most other tier 9 medium tanks. Obviously in this comparison it lags a bit behind the French and the American gun but still beats the Centurion which has a very very bad rate of fire. 
and the reload time 9.59 seconds is very very decent actually for a tier 9 105 millimeter gun however you will be able to lower that reload time with crew trainings and equipment to about eight seconds even or between eight and nine seconds and that is a very very competitive reload time now the shell velocity and this is one of the things where the type 61 really shines is 1478 meters per second and that is great because this vehicle fires APCR ammunition and it means that hitting enemies on the move is actually pretty easy. Even as APCR ammo goes, 1478 meters per second is is even among APCR shells of very, very high velocity. And compared to the AP ammo for M46, this is just a to in a totally different league. Now the ammo capacity is however unsatisfactory at 32 and combined with the very quick reload this gun has, considering that it has a pretty high calibre for a medium tank, it means that you kind of have to pay attention to your ammo at least. Now I haven't really noticed that I run out of ammunition very often in this tank, but it kind of can have some implications for your ammunition loadout, especially considering how much HG ammunition you want to pack. Next we come to gun handling and this is unfortunately where the Type 61 kind of performs slightly worse than it appears. It's got an aiming time of 2.21 seconds which is fairly competitive. Other tier 9 tanks get better aiming time but still 2.21 is actually pretty decent. The accuracy at 0.35 however is actually not very good compared to most other tier 9 medium tanks and it definitely is not sniping accuracy. It's kind of, it's alright, I mean it's not inaccurate but it's just not kind of this laser like accuracy that you might get on the French or the British or even the German medium tanks. The bloom during moving and traversing the tank is actually pretty decent. Obviously the American has got it beaten in that regard because that's kind of one of the things that the American tanks really stand out is their gun handling on the move. But still these stats here are pretty impressive and actually firing on the move, especially when you've got a vertical stabilizer mounted, is pretty easy with the Type 61. Another strong suit of this tank uh, are the gun elevation angles. Now, the gun elevation is 13 degrees upwards, which is not that great, but the depression is 10 degrees, and that makes you very, very flexible when working ridge lines, as you will also see in the gameplay in just a second. And yeah, that is uh, very, very good for this vehicle because it just gives you so much flexibility on the battlefield and opens up so many opportunities for you to sneak up on your enemies and punish them very, very hard with that brutal 105mm. However, the mobility of uh, a Type 61 is kind of a... Well, I've got mixed feelings about it. The speed is alright at 47 kilometers an hour and actually stacks up alright against its competitors, obviously many tanks being a lot quicker, but it still at least beats the Centurion. However, the engine is not very powerful at 604 horsepower and that gives you a horsepower to ton ratio of 17.41, which is all right again, but it's not as good as most other tier 9 medium tanks. And I still feel like the Type 61, it feels pretty maneuverable. Part of it's down to its very good terrain resistances that we can see here, but it's kind of handicapped slightly by this power to weight ratio and really if you drive other tier 9 medium tanks they feel quite a bit more uh, maneuverable and agile on the battlefield so uh, this is i'd say one of the drawbacks of the type 61 is its maneuverability and unfortunately it doesn't get any better when we look at the armor because it only has 55 millimeters of frontal armor and the side of the hull is 35 millimeters meaning that this will be over penetrated by, for example, the tier 10 tank destroyer guns. Now, the turret is slightly better and we'll have a closer look at the armor profile in just a second, but basically the armor is almost non-existent on this tank and because you are so unmaneuverable, this means that you really cannot afford to be caught out in the open because you do not have this maneuverability of, say, an AMX-30 to be able to juke enemy shots and that's why you have to kind of try to avoid fire whenever possible. The view range at 400 meters is very decent for a tier 9 tank, actually above average I would even say, and the rest of the stats are pretty insignificant really. Chance of fire is also very nice at only 12% 
And thus we can say that the Type 61 really has a very solid package, with nothing really standing out too much except for maybe the DPM, but no real, really bad drawbacks except for maybe the armor. But all in all, it's probably safe to say that the Type 61 stacks up pretty evenly against its tier 9 competitors and has got a pretty solid packet of stats. So now we'll have a closer look at the armor profile of the Type 61. And as we can see, um, if it's facing you straight on, really, the whole front of the hull is easily penetrable by any tank this vehicle can meet in the matchmaker. And the turret outside the gun shield is very, very weak as well. Luckily, however, the gun shield can provide quite a bit of protection if it's hit on the top part. However, other parts of the gun shield are again pretty easily penetrated. So it kind of it's hit or miss with this tank. And if I were engaging this vehicle, I would always try to hit the hull, or alternatively this huge weak spot that is hardly armored at all at the top of the vehicle. And it's a lot easier to penetrate here than taking the risk and firing up a turret where you might hit these zones that have got very good armor behind the gun shield. But on the other hand, if you're driving the Type 61, then I would not count on your gun shield bouncing anything because as you can see, the armor profile is very, very inconsistent. So really, when you're a Type 61 driver, you have to expect that every single hit you take will be a penetration. Another issue with this vehicle that I've already kind of pointed out is the side armor. The side armor is very weak and hardly allows for any angling, especially if you even try to angle your vehicle like this. The side armor is still very easy to penetrate, but especially this little uh, kind of slip of armor here that is at an angle when you're facing this vehicle frontally, when you angle your hull becomes a kind of a flat surface towards the enemy and that's why it's very easy to penetrate. So really, uh, angling doesn't help a lot in this tank. Also for artillery it's obviously uh, very juicy target, so really it doesn't matter how your angle of this tank can be penetrated anyway, so the best tactic is to use cover and just try to avoid getting shot in the first place, or at least avoid getting hit, because when you get hit, you will get penetrated and it will hurt. The only upside might be that uh, it's very hard to penetrate this vehicle with high explosive shells, at least frontally. So, um, next I'll be talking about crew skills, equipment and uh, ammunition loadout on this vehicle. First of all, let's have a look at the ammo. Now, what I do is I do 25.52 on this tank. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is the very, very capable heat ammunition this tank gets with a very strong penetration. Unfortunately, however, it obviously gets a less normalization and also worse capabilities in penetrating spaced armor than the normal APCR ammo, so just keep that in mind. Another great thing I love about the 105mm guns on medium tanks is the very decent HE ammo that can be very useful, especially when you're, for example, engaging the likely armored German tank destroyers or some light vehicles. And these can also come in very handy, that's why I like to keep two of these in store, five heat ammo and 25 APCR. The reason why I use that little heat is because you've got fairly little ammo capacity and really the APCR ammunition should be enough to penetrate most of the time. However, if you can afford it, feel free to uh, take more heat, but obviously it's going to come at a price. For crew skills, now um, I would go for brothers in arms and repairs definitely on the entire crew, two very important uh, skills, especially repairs I would probably even get before brothers in arms because you just cannot afford to be stuck with your tracks down in the open with this vehicle because it's just simply too vulnerable. Then out of the same reason, sixth sense is essential on this tank because you do not want to get hit at all and Sixth Sense really helps because you get a notification when you're spotted and uh, then you can retreat to cover. Then two other skills I really want to highlight are Snapshot on the gunner and Smooth Ride on the driver because they will allow you to fire on the move more effectively and that in turn allows you to pop around the corner, take a snapshot and go back into cover and that again reduces your risk of being damaged or destroyed. One thing I would even recommend maybe on the driver would be preventative maintenance. The reason for that is because this tank's fuel tanks and engine actually get hit quite often. I think some module that's prone to catching fire is located at the front and uh, that's why you're, you get fires pretty often in this vehicle. So maybe preventative maintenance 
would be a good idea. And for equipment, well, you definitely want to get the vertical stabilizer for the same reasons you want to get snapshot and smooth ride, and obviously you want to get a tank gun rammer, but for the third slot, it's kind of up to you. You can choose between vents and coated optics, and it really depends on the kind of player you are. Now, if you find that you kind of are more of a late game player who really lo loves these late game engagements where you're kind of one on one and so on then coated optics can really give you an edge in that kind of situation and also coated optics can help if you're at the front line all of the time in a position to spot enemy vehicles however really you should be playing this vehicle at the front line because it doesn't have enough armor so if you play more of a supporting role then probably improved vents would be better because it just helps with your reload, aim time and so on and increases your effectiveness at mid-range I'd say. But again it just comes down to personal preference and really both options are completely viable. I went with vents here but actually in retrospect I would probably take coated optics over vents. But again it's an entirely personal decision. So that's about it for stats and so on in the garage so I'll now show you some gameplay to hopefully showcase how to use this tank effectively and I'll see you on the battlefield in a second. So we are on Redshire in a tier 9 game and this is a very very nice matchup for us. We are only one of three tier 9 tanks on our team and actually the Type 61 is one of those tanks that kind of are pretty good in uh, can uh, decent matchups but they can also cope very well with a tier 10 game because the gun the 105 millimeter gun is just so competitive and it's got so good penetration that it doesn't really matter if you're firing at tier 8 9 or 10 tanks as long as you're uh, competent enough to hit the weak spots properly which in most cases should be possible I guess uh, you will be able to penetrate and yeah that was just uh, complete donkey shot, I don't know what I was thinking there. But anyway, so um, I've gone to the hill in the centre of the battle and there's a very good reason for this. That is because first of all, I know my tank's got good gun depression, meaning uh, I should be able to uh, dominate this region of the map here very well with, uh, my, with my depression of 10 degrees. And the other uh, kind of reasoning I had was that I kind of need to play a supporting role with this vehicle. You cannot afford to just rush to the front and try to get into brawls with this vehicle because uh, your armor just is not good enough and your speed isn't good enough either. So you'll e end up losing most one-on-one -on -one engagements with other tier 10 medium tanks. So the alternative is trying to play a supporting role but you cannot be a sniper either because your accuracy and aim time aren't quite good enough. So you're kind of stuck in this awkward middle where you're not um, good at the one thing and not really good at the other thing, but not bad at anything either. And that's why I kind of try to go to the center of the map here because it allows me to kind of take middle range shots at uh, enemies on both flanks without kind of risking being unable to uh, to uh, kind of hit my shots all the time. So right where you see kind of the problem with the bad aim time this tank has and if I had been in say an AMX 30 or a Centurion even then I would have probably been able to connect that shot to the IS-6 but because I kind of try to rush my shot in this tank and it doesn't have as good gun handling as comparable other tier 9 medium tanks I ended up missing so that's one of the drawbacks here and I'll just speed up the game a bit because not too much happens right here. I just kind of camp this ridge, hoping for some of the enemy lights to show up, and they do eventually. But I miss my shot. Admittedly, it was a very, very narrow shot that I could take there, and I missed. And I missed my second one against a bulldog again, which is kind of painful because I would have been able to take him down right there. Probably should have waited because once he drove out of cover, I would have been able to connect the shot. Anyway though he gets taken down by the Type 62 and now I get hit and right there you can see how prone this Type 61 tank right here is to um, enemy fire. And another thing I should probably point out is that the camo value this tank gets is abysmal. So uh, especially when you move up from the STA-1 which has actually pretty good camo, 
uh, compared to that, this Type 61 Tier 9 tank is very, very bad in camo. So, it gets the same camo as the E50, I believe. So, um, that means that uh, you do not only uh, suffer a lot hit point wise when you get hit, but you get hit a lot too because you get spotted very often or very easily at least. And you kind of need to remember that when you're not like, uh, say, a leopard or an AMX 30 where you can just sit behind a bush all day long and just expect that you will not get spotted no matter what you do. Especially once you fire the gun, chances are that enemies will spot you and uh, will begin to take you down. Nonetheless, right here you can see what our great DPM and gun depression are doing for us. We can work this ridge very, very well here. Always pop over the hill, take a quick snapshot and retreat. Now, uh, we connect that shot with the Louvre, I believe, but I don't think we penetrate probably. This might be a kind of a situation where we want to load heat against the turret of the Louvre, but I just wasn't sure if, uh, if that was actually worthwhile uh, because they are pretty expensive. So, I'm just kind of trying to keep this position on my ridge here. I think this is a very, very advantageous position for me. One thing you need to remember though, if you're taking these kind of engagements, is that you've got this enormous weak spot on the top of your tank in the form of this cupola. And uh, you really have to make sure that you do not linger too long once you've crested the ridge, because otherwise um, enemies will definitely take advantage of the fat cupola, especially at long range. And this is the kind of situation where you'd probably rather have coated optics as opposed to vents, because this kind of right here I have to do my own spotting and um, probably I would be able to perform better here if I had that extended view range by 10% up to 440 meters. So right now I'm just hoping that a T10 will uh, retreat around the corner and almost, almost, come on, oh yeah, that's what I've been waiting for. Second kill picked up, great success. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, I guess it was a bit sneaky of me but you know, I'll take the kills if they're given to me. Um, so now this this is very tricky for me here, the Louvre, and that was probably a bit of a misplay on my side. It was very, very unlikely that I'd be able to penetrate that Louvre with the APCR. So uh, probably I should have just either loaded heat or retreated directly because the Louvre's got pretty decent gun handling and it was pretty obvious that he would be able to shoot me before I was... Uh, able to retreat, especially because he knew that I was there. But then again, we can see the good penetration here, me being able to penetrate that only frontally without any problems whatsoever. This um, 105mm definitely showing up today, and that's just one of the things I must say I really like the most about these tier 9 and 10 medium tanks, just their guns are probably perfect for my kind of playstyle. They've got very good gun handling, decent reload, great DPM, but also great penetration. And I just love my high pen guns when uh, sometimes you can even slice through the frontal turret armor of some, say, German tier 10 tanks. And uh, now, oh yeah, there's the Louvre. I think we might be able to take him out here. Yes, we can. Very nice. And the unfortunate thing here is, like, in a situation like this, I always think, well, the Type 61, okay, I'm doing all right here, but I kind of think, if I was, say, in an AMX 30, I'd be able to do the same stuff, but probably more effectively. Fair enough, I get 2 degrees more gun depression, but the AMX 30 would probably be able to handle the situation over this ridge with 8 degrees of gun depression just as effectively, and I'd have more DPM and better accuracy in gun handling. Now, unfortunately, this AMX 3090 decides to take me out, and that removes my gun from the game. But still, I feel like this replay here uh, showcased pretty well how uh, you can actually use this tank to the Type 61 to work ridge lines effectively because that 10 degrees of gun depression really gives you the edge in several engagements. I'm just going to speed the replay up a bit here until we see what the result is. The AMX 1390 gets taken down, so I get my revenge. Very glad to have that. And uh, now it's only a batch had artillery left in the enemy team. And um, I don't think he'll be able to unwrap the cap. No, he won't. So we uh, conclude this game with a victory, although it was taken out just before the end, unfortunately. Still, 
Um, that's one thing you definitely have to keep in mind whenever you can get into that kind of situation where you can engage your enemies at about 300 to 200 meters range over a ridge. Um, that is the best spot to be in in a Type 61 and one of the most essential parts to mastering this tank or to having success in it is to find hard cover. You need to have a place where you can retreat to, for example, behind the top of that hill, uh, in my case, where you are safe from enemy vehicles because otherwise you will just get chewed to bits with that very mediocre armor that you have. So let's have a look at the post-game stats and then I'll give you the final resume of what I think of this vehicle. So these are the post-game stats. We were able to pick up 59,190 credits and 1.5k experience, almost second class mastery badge and a few minor uh, achievements as well. Now um, we dealt over 4,000 damage which was actually pretty surprising for me. I thought it would have been less in this game but that just shows you what the great DPM of this tank can actually achieve when it's put to work. And um, that again was mostly due to uh, to me being able to utilize that hill there in the central part of the map effectively enough. And again, as you could see at the beginning of this game, it was actually taken down to almost a quarter of my hit points, I guess. But still, uh, thanks to the use of cover in this game, I was still able to put my gun to very good use. And that's actually something you always have to keep in mind that even if you lose a lot of your health, your gun is still just as effective as when you're full health, you just have to be very careful about taking any more damage. Now, uh, we fired 24 shots of those 15 hit and 12 penetrated, which I guess is a very respectable score, especially if we remember that many of the shots that were fired were kind of clutch. And actually a pretty decent proportion of our damage was from over 300 meters range although I wouldn't recommend using this gun at that kind of ranges your ideal kind of firing range would be between 200 and 300 meters I'd say that's the kind of distance where your enemies stand less chance hitting you effectively but you can still use your gun properly without that 0.35 accuracy becoming too noticeable and um Okay, we also got 902 assistance damage, mostly due to spotting, and that again probably would have been able to pump that up with coated optics, but that was just kind of my choice. But I guess overall coated optics would probably be very nice to use on this tank. And although we didn't fire any premium ammo, I believe, uh, we still, or maybe just one shell or something, but we still had to pay, pay a huge sum. Almost all our profit was gobbled up by the expenses for repair and most of all ammunition. So that just shows you these high tier tanks are very, very costly to maintain. Anyway, that was more or less my review for the Type 61. What do I think of this tank? Well, it's kind of, I've kind of got very mixed feelings. I think for me personally, it was very fun to play and my personal verdict would be more positive i guess but when i look at the stats i kind of think i don't know this tank seems to not have anything special i mean it's kind of got very bad armor but i just think that uh if you want to forgo armor anyway then why not drive a amx 30 prototype that seems to be better in every other regard except for gun depression you get better mobility better gun uh, better gun handling and even better dpm so yeah, the only reason you'd really get this vehicle is for the gun depression. I don't think that justifies the uh, kind of advantages the AMX-30 has over this tank. But then again, the AMX-30 is somewhat overpowered at tier 9s, or at least very, very strong. So I guess compared to other tier 9 tanks, like say the Centurion Mark 7 or the M46, I guess this tank still is very competitive and I actually never felt like this tank was underpowered or anything. I'm not going to keep this tank anyway because I just feel like the STB-1 does the same things the Type 61 does but just better at tier 10 and that's why I'm probably going to sell this vehicle. Still, I'd say the Type 61 is a worthy stepping stone on the way up for tier 10 but it just is not a tank that I would play the Japanese tech tree exclusively to get but it definitely is not a pain to grind through and a decent vehicle in its own right. So I hope I could explain to you uh, how to use this tank properly and if I was able to do that then please make sure to leave a like and maybe even subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.